Transform your home for less with ABC Blind's Spring Inspiration Sale. This is the Pete and Kimber Podcast. Good morning, Perth. Good morning, Kimber. Hey, good morning. It is Friday ahead of Telethon Weekend, a massive weekend here in Perth, and we're excited for it. There'll be a lot going on. We're going to be on um, TV on Sunday. We are, we? Yes. Well, we're going to be in the phone room if you want to have a chat with us. Yep. You can call on Sunday morning, and then um, we're going to be broadcasting from outside the arena from our combi van from 10 to 1. That's right. It's going to be a huge, huge weekend for Telethon and for Mix 94.5. Pete and Kimber. We learnt yesterday Liam Payne had passed away, former band member of One Direction. It's come as a shock to everyone, including his bandmates. Give me the gossip. Gossip Queen. Tell me everything. Gossip Queen Alana is in with the latest on this. Good morning, Alana. Good morning, guys. And, uh, yeah, it's been 24 hours since we woke up to that tragic news yesterday about Liam Payne and so much more confusion uh, has has happened since then and we're starting to get to the bottom of the details regarding this awful incident, Pete. What sort of stuff have they revealed? So yesterday Reuters revealed two panicked phone calls from a worker at the hotel, the Casa Sur Hotel, in Buenos Aires. One was basically saying that there is man acting very erratically, destroying everything in the room. There was a second oh. follow-up phone call that basically said, we are scared for his welfare. There is a balcony in his room. Can you send someone immediately? So that's what we found out yesterday. Now today are some pretty confronting images of the destroyed hotel room from Argentinian magazine Clarine showing a smashed television set, lots of white powder, oh. owl foil, that sort of thing in the room. Jeez, it's amazing how those images get out, yes. isn't it? You know, for something like this, clearly someone's been in there going, oh, this is Liam Payne's room, quick, get the pictures, send them out. That's yeah. insane. But the police are coming out now and they are uh, reporting that it was in complete disarray. They said, look, all reports point to Payne being left alone at the time of the incident, but there's two women that are helping authorities that saw him in his hotel room just a few hours prior. Right. So they're trying to piece it all together. But what is interesting, Pete, they are saying that they are going to treat this as a suspicious death. So not that he was necessarily with anyone, but it was very evident from what they found in the room that he was going through some kind of substance abuse outbreak. Now, this is really interesting because off the back of Matthew Perry's death, which we know was only less than a year ago, Mm. five people in connection to Matthew Perry have been charged uh, with offences, they are set to go to trial because of the the use of ketamine. Yeah, people who supplied the drugs, Correct. people who were involved in it. Correct. And so, are they connecting this with Liam? Well, in they, some way? they're basically saying that it was very evident that there was a lot of medication in there. There was a lot of substances that should have been there. So they are going to look further into that as a suspicious death. But uh, the band has released a statement this morning. Obviously, uh, they took yesterday to process what was happening. They've said, we're completely devastated by the news of Liam's passing. In time and when everyone is able to be, there will be more to say. But for now, we're going to take some time to grieve the loss of our brother who we loved dearly. The memories we shared with him will be treasured forever. So really... Really oh. devastating stuff. And only 31 years old yeah. and a seven-year-old son uh, yeah. with former pop star Cheryl Cole. So no public word from her as yet. What's amazing at times like this is everything else that comes out. Like all of the troubles that we're hearing about him. You know, the, the fact that a week ago the second solo album was scrapped, mm. plans gone, teardrops the new single, didn't manage to crack the top 30 in the UK. You know, a lot of pressure for him. Such a global sensation. The split with his manager, whether there's truth to that, the the uh, stuff that's coming out about the ex-girlfriends. Like, yes. There's just so much turmoil in this guy's life that he's dealing with. There really is. And, I mean, he was in Argentina to see, see Niall Horan, one of his fellow One Direction bandmates, his concert. Uh, and people were, were posting on the post that he wrote saying, look, he looks erratic, he looks unwell, this is really painful to watch, what's happened to him, this is concerning. So Aww. there has been concern for his, his mental welfare over a number of weeks. And, and ultimately the worst has transpired. It's really awful news. Oh, that is terrible. That is such terrible news. Look, and we'd say too, if there's anyone that you need to speak to out there, then please call Lifeline 13 11 14. But just shocking to hear. Yeah. Thanks, Hope, Alana. No Thank worries, you. Guys. The Pete and Kimber Podcast. Imagine this. You're a mum who's been stuck in a camper van with your two teenage kids, knowing agonisingly that your home has been built for almost two years and you're still yet paying rent and a mortgage, and meanwhile the home builder 
is busy building his wife's mansion mm. instead of working on your home. That's right. That is Kathy Ellis's story. Yeah, it's tragic. Absolutely tragic. But there has been an update for WA's niche living customers. We caught this on the Cook government's Instagram. And it does say that they've got a way forward under a new arrangement with Niche Living. The company has surrendered its building license. It's banned them from building in WA for at least 10 years. But what that means is that customers like Kathy can now access the home indemnity insurance and engage new builders to complete their homes. Essentially, they can get on with their lives. And we caught up with Kathy to find out how life changing this is. Yeah, I think I personally needed this because I needed to have a light at the end of the tunnel. But for all of us as a group, it's just changed the mood of everybody. It's fantastic. Did this information, once this dropped, were you contacted Mm -hmm. immediately to let you know and your group contacted immediately to let you know? And does this take place straight away? You You can go out there and grab a new builder? Yeah, it took a few days for us to be formally contacted. So we only knew what came through on the media. Um, Niche Living took, they didn't contact us until Tuesday this week it was, with instructions of what documents we had to sign. And now we all have to finish submitting our quotes to QBE to get the indemnity insurance, the process that we started back in August. What does it look like for you now? You said when you spoke to us that you had engaged another builder, you were looking at moving forward and then that opportunity was Mm -hmm. taken from you. Now that you can get back into this, realistically, when might you be back in your home? I'll actually know at the end of this week, I've got a meeting on Friday morning to go into my house to see what it looks like. Wow. I haven't been inside for a very long time. So that's quite exciting How for long, me. Kathy? How long since you went inside there? Oh, easily five months, if not longer. Jeez. Oh, yeah, well, you won't know yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm quite excited just to be able to open that door and see what's going on on the inside. Um, but I'm hoping early next year, like not too long after Christmas, hopefully well, we'll be out of move in, which is life changing for me. We have our fingers crossed for you. We know it's been very challenging and you've been spending so much money on this mortgage of a house mm-hmm. you can't live in and being in a caravan yes. park and all the things you've had to do. And now you'll finally get your own place. We're thrilled for you. Thank you. It's a bit surreal at the moment, but I think once they start working on my house, it'll sink in a bit. Yeah. Do you tell the kids? Yeah. The kids? Your kids know? Oh yes, they were ecstatic. I bet. Like but just the thought of having their own bedrooms and getting back into our routine again. Yeah, yeah. I'd, it's hard to explain to people how much that means when we haven't had that for a couple of years. Oh, I think people understand, Kathy. Yeah. Everyone out there, for whatever reason, going through homelessness right now or finding it really hard to find that home stability would completely mm. understand. It's been very emotional, but, yes, yeah, so exciting. Oh, it's such a good news story. It's well, so nice to see them being able to move on. I mean, it's certainly better than what they were dealing with, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. just a shame that it even came to this in the first place. 100%. Pete and Kimbers, yay or nay? Professor Rummy, hi. Happy Friday and happy Telephone Weekend. Yeah. Yay. First one for yay nay this morning. Having dinner with your partner, but different meals. Three, two, one. Well, you yay. know I'm going to say what? What do you mean, but different meals? So you have to have different oh, meals. Oh, like eating together, but you're both eating separate food. Like, yes. Yeah, but that's yay. yay. What's wrong with that? Just to clarify, like different food. No, yeah. I, you know what I think. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm vegetarian. I eat different food to my partner of course. every single meal. Well, that's that's normal for you, but for yes. where, where are <laughs> yes, we? Yes, it is. We're, are we in a restaurant or are we at home? Home. Oh, as well, well. Okay. Well, that makes it a little bit different. But I, it, I've got three kids who all eat different things as well. So more often than not, I'm cooking a few meals. It's a bloody nightmare. I'm just only realizing this now with my partner because. I cooked fish last night. He doesn't like fish. Oh, did you already just realise? Yes. But it's been years. You've been together yes, years. Yes, I know. Oh. Does he not like fish or does he not like the way you cook fish? No. Because no. When, when Liz and I first got together, she didn't eat meat. And then the first meal that she had at our house, Dad had cooked a barbecue and Dad's a gun barbecuer and she had a taste of that meat. She was like, all right, I'm on to meat now. So she's food fo- fo- vegetarian. Fo- no, vegetarian. No, she never said veg- she was a vegetarian. Otherwise, we wouldn't be together. But I feel like this is something we should. <laughs> I'm just joking. I think it's I feel like this standard. is something we should know before we get into a committed relationship because now no. it's now I realise I can never have fish in my own home. Yes, yes you can. can. 
You just eat it. You just eat it separately. And like it's standard. No, nah, it's getting dumped. Second, <laughs> second <laughs> one. Jake. We'll Buy, take you, Jake. <laughs> buying a pet because your kids want one. Three, two, one. <laughs> nay, <laughs> nay. Oh, it's irresponsible. Oh, I know. I want to say nay, but you I'm, don't just I'm, get a pet because your kids asked for one. I was in a pet store yesterday. And, and um, you can't get another dog. No, no, no. We, we, we're good with the one we have. Yes. Um, but I uh, I saw hermit crabs. I'm very close to either buying hermit crabs or a fish. Because your kids want one? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's I'm okay. very close. Why is that okay? Because oh, it they teaches them. They... In... No, it's a it's good life lesson. It teaches them impermanence. <laughs> and they don't pee. They realise nothing oh, lives forever. Oh, come on. That's, that's, <laughs> that's they don't true. pee and poo everywhere as well. Yeah, they do. Unlike a puppy. It's different. It's just different. <laughs> the Pete and Kimber podcast. We have this sort of long term relationship with Ant Middleton on this show. He's a good friend of the show, and it dates back a long time because we we'd played a few tricks on Pete. Like in the beginning, we'd done like down the phone while we were talking to him. We'd put you through a push up challenge and and a few other things. So you had been a little bit nervous around Ant when we finally got Ant to come into the studio for the first time. Yeah, because I've got mad respect for the guy. Yeah. Like, and, I, I like him. And that was the thing. So you were a bit nervous and we actually set Pete up and we did it so well because we said, Pete's going to be suspicious. He already doesn't trust Ant. So what we'll do is we'll wait till we're three or four minutes into an interview with him when he thinks everything's fine so that Pete won't be sus. But Ant was already ready to make Pete panic. And we'd <laughs> really set him up to go, hey, and can you overreact? And we'll get Pete to ask about your kids. And whenever he men- mentions the kids, you can freak out. And this is what took place. you got five kids, right? I feel like you've hacked parenting with this book where you could literally just give the kids the book. The chapter 15. You think you know everything already? Oh. I did say that I didn't want to talk about my children. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that. Is it? Sorry. Sorry, I Is had that... no idea. I had I wasn't told that uh, before, but that's okay. Well, um, are you are you okay to continue? Are you sorry? Ah, I'm just oh messing with. My God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Nailed it! Nailed it! You know, I feel I actually feel sick every time I hear that audio. Oh, I, I still hate feel it. it. It was so awkward <laughs> in here, the and look, I knew it was happening. The look that he gave me when he said. Don't talk about my kids. I just... Oh. You can still see it in his face. And so then, you know, it created in you this real sense of, I can't trust you guys, I can't trust Aunt Middleton, like, whatever. Every time we speak to him, and you're, you're uncomfortable. Now, you didn't realise this, but Ant had come back into Perth another time, and we said, well, why don't we set Pete up for a blackout challenge? Now, blackout challenge is where the producers put noise-cancelling headphones on our ears, they cover our eyes, and they take us to anywhere... And once we remove the masks, we just have to deal with whatever circumstances in front of us. So you didn't know what was coming. What we actually did was took you to the Ninja Academy. And as soon as you took your mask off, Aunt Middleton was about one inch from your face. Oh, get, get, get out. That's wet. Why is that wet? We're at the Ninja Academy in Osborn Park. All right, line him up. Walk him up. All right, Aunt, you ready? All right, Pete. Blindfold coming off. Now, Pete! Oh, God, you don't belong to me! Put your hands on your side! Listen in. You're about to enter a whole world of pain. Do you understand? Oh. Do you understand? I understand? Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Pete has been greeted by Ant Middleton, and Ant has thrown him to the ground to do push ups. Yes, sir! Drop down and give me 10. 10, let's go! 10 what? 10 of the best press ups, let's go! Stop arguing with me and listen in. Faster! You can make this last as long as you want. When you don't stand up, 10 burpees, let's go. 10 burpees. Come on, down, up, and a jump. Let's go. Nice and fast. That's it. Let's warm you up. Come on. You don't want to injure Pete you. is struggling, and However, Ant is not backing fighting. down. Go! Move! Pete's still smiling, but I don't think this is going to last long. Let's go. Yeah, Pete, go. Yes. That's it, Pete. Let's go. That's it. Yes, Use yes. the momentum. Keep going. Yeah. Go on, that's it. That's Good it. Good job. Swing, swing. Idea. Come His on. hands are burning. Oh, let's go, big man. I'm a really big boy. You know what you need to do after this, don't you? What? Get fit. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You're a big boy, Pete. Come, big, big, big boy. I feel sick. Go. Pete. That oh, was that really pathetic. Oh. Oh, my granny could have done better than that. Yeah. She's six foot under, let's go. 
I've never had any other point of strength, I'm sorry. They sort of relented on him now because I think he feels bad. It's not how you start, it's how you finish, Pete. Finish strong. Running, running, he's running, running. He's on the mission! Yes! 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 I said, get up there! You did the running wall. Yeah. You made it up the running wall. I know. But it's the highs and the lows and the emotional turmoil of having a friend like Ant Middleton. But, you know, you couldn't have done it without Ant. You're right. I couldn't have. As terrifying as he is for you, he's also really inspiring because you really look up to him. Hello, Ant. Hello. 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 Hi, Ant. It's it? Pete and Kimber. Hi. How are you, Ant? Pete, can you see me? <laughs> you, don't you dare. I can't can see you. Can you see me? No, you, I you can't, can't see, see him. Where are you? Are you sure? sure? You don't want to look around? You sure you can't see him? No, seriously, don't do this to me. Because I, like, I've like we played back some of the audio from the last times we've caught up, and I it's... It's very hard audio for me to hear, and I am Just have worried. A look around. The second, stop it! Is are you here or not? Just out with it. Can't. <laughs> are you here? Why is Rami looking towards the you elevator? No, I can't tell you that, but you will find out very, very soon. <laughs> <laughs> I love this relationship, and welcome back to Perth. I love you, Pete. You know I love you. <laughs> I love you Thank too, you mate. so much. Thank you. Um, I did, we did see that you're here for Telethon, and I, I got to admit, like I because we're going to be there this weekend as well, and I'm concerned. I, I am concerned. So, um, but it is nice to have Do you not back be here, concerned, mate. Pete. We, we've we've built this brotherhood now. We beat the we, we built this bond now. So we need to work together now, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. Also, you've helped Pete achieve things in his life he never thought he could do, like getting him up that running wall at the Ninja Academy. I mean, he's just been on a high since then. Do you know what? He was absolutely phenomenal. I, I have to admit, I was actually really, really impressed because you smashed it that day, Pete, to be fair. Thanks, Ed. Well done. Yeah. Appreciate it, mate. Thank now, you. Now, and given that you are in town for Telethon, I mean, we know you did Telethon last year and you absolutely loved it and said, you know, we pride ourselves on the fact that the people of WA, the charity and the way we look after each other is second to none. Um, what are you looking forward to the most about this weekend? I just love being in Perth. I love the people. I love coming together. You know, you sort of run your own stuff here as well, don't you? you know, it's almost <laughs> like your own little, little Luxembourg, well, big Luxembourg. You know, you know, you like to do your own stuff. I, I love that amongst yourselves. You all, you all rally together. You all get the job done. And when there's a goal or, or an objective, um, you chip in and, and smash it. And that's what I love. And everyone getting hooked up for the telephone weekend. It's, it's phenomenal to see. And I, I love being part of it. Absolutely unreal. Well, we're thrilled that you're back here. Although, and you know, a difficult couple of days. We believe that you were friends with Liam Payne from One Direction. Yeah, so yeah, good friends with Liam. Um, I'm so sorry. That must be awful. Here and hearing the news. Yeah, you know, I feel feel for for the family and you know um, for for his son and yeah, it's, it's it's it was tough. It was a tough bullet to bite that one because. He's 31 years old. He's a, and I know him well. Um, you know, we chat on the phone all the time, and um, you know, I only lived uh, like 45 minutes away from him. So any time he'd call me when he, you know, he just wanted to chat, just pop in the car, and we'd, uh, you know, we'd have a good chin wag and have and catch up. And uh, you know, that's not going to be there anymore, and it's it's quite sad. I just feel, I just feel a bit a bit bad that I couldn't, you know, be there for him when uh, when he was in Argentina. But listen. Um, you know, you've got to think about the family this time and um, just, you know, hopefully um, they can rally together and um, and start to process what's gone on because, wow, talk about shock. Yeah, yeah. very. Mate, I, thank you for being here. You know, thank you for being a part of Telethon. It's always great to have you in town every single year, especially under such circumstances as well. And um, look, with <laughs> I do mean it when I say I do hope we bump into each other this weekend. <laughs> It'll be really nice to catch up with you. No, I really hope you run into each other this weekend. <laughs> Well, listen, um, it's great. It's always great to uh, to hear from you guys. It's always great to be in your company. So we will definitely catch up 
some way, shape or form this weekend. Looking forward to it, mate. You take care. We'll see you then. Thank you so much, guys. See you soon. Transform your home for less with ABC Blinds Spring Inspiration Sale. Save up to 40% off indoor blinds, shop shutters and sheer curtains.